Hey guys, if you've seen my previous videos, you know that I have an episode on skin color. Why are some people darker colored and others lighter? It turns out it's selective pressure between skin protective factor of darker skin and being able to absorb enough sunlight to produce vitamin D. So it's a tie between the environment and your diet. Do you have a grain rich diet that's low in vitamin D? Or do you have a meaty diet that gets you enough vitamin D and so you need selective pressure towards darker skin for that skin protective factor? Additionally, it turns out that we all really are shades of brown. We have one skin color pigment and that's melanin. Therefore, there are no truly white people with the exception of albino. So albino people, they're really light colored skin actually has sort of sometimes a reddish colored tint to it. And that's how we know traditionally people that identify as white or Caucasian or even maybe European aren't truly white colored. They still have some brown pigment in their skin. So if we were truly white, you would be able to see pretty well through our skin and the blood vessels underneath would actually color our skin sort of reddish. So that's how we know if you are, say, Caucasian, you still have melanin, you're still brown-ish. So for the most part, we all are shades of brown. There's one color, brown, but we're just different variations of it. Even myself as an African-American, although we are referred to as black, we are also brown as well. But on that note, what does it really mean to be black? what does it really mean to be African American? So I know my ancestors came from Africa, but the African continent is approximately 11.72 million square miles, and there are upwards of 58 countries in Africa. So saying my ancestors came from there isn't really narrowing it down much. In fact, the birthplace of all humanity of Homo sapiens was Africa. So saying I'm Africans, saying I'm human. So I actually did something called the Ancestry DNA test. It's a little over a hundred dollar test when you factor in shipping and taxes, but it's something I would highly recommend, especially if you don't know where your genetic heritage comes from. So Ancestry DNA looks at your your chromosomes, the actual genes on them, the short nucleotide polymorphisms. Even though humans share the same DNA and the same genes, we have different versions of, the, of each gene called alleles. And alleles are just alternative versions of genes. So ancestry DNA can see how these different alternative alleles different, differ between people groups and can sort of trace back your genetic heritage. It is sort of a complicated process on their end, but for us, it just translates to a really long wait. For me, I got my test back in about five weeks after I sent it off. The quote can be anywhere from four to six weeks or as high as six to eight weeks, depending upon current demand, but it is a process that I would recommend you do get a lot of interesting data back and it does sort of help identify what your genetic heritage is. So it turns out I am from Africa. The test did confirm that, so we are good. However, I also know that my ancestors are from two predominant regions of Africa. So we have the Ivory Coast slash Ghana and then we have the Cameroon slash Congo region. Interestingly enough, the re these are regions that were heavily involved in the transatlantic slave trade. So really no surprise there either, but narrowing down to two regions actually sorts of helps me identify who I am, who my ancestors are. Recently, Ancestry DNA added something called DNA communities. It helps sort of track where your ancestors moved across the different continents. So I just logged in today and I saw that based off of my genetic profile, my ancestors settled in the North Carolina and Virginia region. 
So those were also some of the first regions to get slaves according to ancestry DNA. So that's something that's pretty cool. I'm now living in a whole nother state, but my ancestors, chances are, were in North Carolina. Or, well, originally, you know, the Congo and the Ivory Coast. So that's all, that's pretty cool. I also learned that I do have some European genetics in me, so that wasn't too big a surprise either. I'm pretty far removed, my ancestors are, from Africa. It's not like, I'm not a first generation, I'm not a second generation. I'm, I've been in the United States and my parents have been in the United States and their grandparents and probably their grandparents as well, as far as anyone can tell. So the actual process does involve you sending a saliva sample, but it's not too bad. It is a lot of saliva at one time and you aren't supposed to eat right before. But aside from that, it's a fairly painless process. You don't have to send in, you know, a hand or an arm or even an eyelash or a hair. It's just saliva. It's pretty non-invasive. So if you're wondering sort of who you are from a genetic standpoint, where your ancestors came, and something like a family tree isn't helping you out, I definitely recommend you check out Ancestry.com. I do have sort of a full longer review on Tumblr if you guys want to check that out as well. But thanks for stopping by and watching today's edition of today's science lesson. So catch you guys in the next video and as always see you later.